Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And here we are again. It is Thursday and it's 12 noon. And today, um, today we're looking at the stifle or the knee. And um, again, there were quite a few questions. And for those that asked about pug problems, <laughs> um, not only do pugs have back problems, uh, pugs also have knee problems. And one of the knee problems that they um, experience is a patella luxation. And so I thought we'd start, um, we'd start today with just looking at where is the knee, what is the knee, and what is patella luxation. And then we'll look at, you know, kind of like what do we need to do about it? So what can we do about it? It is another area where um, I'm frequently asked questions um, about but why did my why did my vet say this and why do I have to do the surgery and do I have to do the surgery? Okay, so um, let's run through that and and hopefully you'll come away with um, a little bit of um, information um, and some ideas if you have a dog that suffers from patella luxation and um, some ideas on, on what to do about it. Okay, so um, again, if you can hear me in the chat box, just let me know. Um, everything seems to be restored. Uh, to normal today. So I hope that is the case. So the knee. The knee in a dog is the same as a knee in a person. It sits, um, if we look at the dog, and I'm going to look through the dog. Okay. This is the knee. All right. So back, hip, knee, ankle, ankle, paw. Okay, and this little bone that you see here is the kneecap or the patella. So patella is the scientific name for a kneecap. And so if I look at a human, hmm, check at this leg, here's the knee. Okay, this bone at the top here is my kneecap. All right. Uh, Carol, hello. Lindy, hello. Welcome. My regulars, ah, hello, Kelsey. Don't think I've seen your name before. Welcome. Um, and <clears throat> the knee lies between the femur, the thigh bone, and the shin bone. The shin has got two bones. The most important is which, um, hello, Jane and Natasha. Wow, how's it? Um, the most uh, Im important of those bones is the tibia, um, which is the large bone. And then on the outside, we have that little bone, which is called the fibula. So these make up the shin bones. This is the femur or the thigh bone. And in between, we have the joint, which is called the knee. And running over in a groove, running over the, um, there's a groove on the um, bottom end of the femur. The kneecap or the patella runs in that groove. Okay. And... The only difference with people, people have the same, um, the same structures. We have a femur, we have a tibia, we have a fibula, we have a patella. Um, the only difference is that we walk upright and dogs are quadrupeds. Okay. Ah, thank you, Shanti, for that, um, for that feedback. Uh, so, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the knee. So I'm just going to take, I've got this lovely little knee model here, which I'm going to hold closer to the camera, and I hope that you are able to see it. Let's look at it like that. So here we have the shin bone or the tibia. This is the fibula. So that's the thin little bone. Think about when you eat a chicken drumstick, that very little thin bone is the fibula. Okay. And um, this is always on the outside of the leg or the lateral aspect of the leg. Then we have the femur, okay? And what you see here is the ligament. And inside the ligament, if I just turn it a little, you will see the kneecap, all right? So the kneecap lies inside the ligament of a group of muscles called the quadriceps. For those of you that gym, we just refer to the quads. Quadriceps femoris, quad meaning four, the muscle actually has four bellies. So it's this, this muscle here on the front of your leg. Dogs have it too, horses have it, um, chickens have it, okay? So 
this, these four bellies make up the group that we call the quads. They come down and they inside that tendon that all those muscles meet into one tendon. Inside that tendon is the kneecap or the patella. And then it attaches onto the bottom or onto the top of your tibia, onto the top of your shin bone. So if we just look at my knee model again, Now we're looking at it, let me just put it in a place where you can see it. The quads are up here. Here's the four muscle bellies come into one ligament. There's the kneecap on the inside. It runs on a groove, a groove on the, a groove on the femur. Okay. And it comes down and it attaches on the bottom of the tibia. Okay. The shin bone, the main shin bone. All right. What you see in here is joint and it's filled with fluid and there's a fat pad in there. Okay. And as the bone moves, as these bones, so this is now without the kneecap. Okay. Just think about the knee bending. As the knee bends. Okay. The fluid is pumped around. Remember when we spoke about arthritis, the fluid is pumped around the joint and on top of the femur here on the groove, we have a kneecap. So the kneecap glides up and down there as the, as the joint bends. All right. Um, hello, Yanni. Uh, and so it's really important for the functioning of the knee that that patella glides in the groove so patella luxation luxation is a fancy word for dislocation um, in other words dis meaning poor location poor location a patella or a kneecap that is dislocated or luxated is not in the groove okay it's very simple it's not in the groove now that can be to the inside of the leg or to the outside of the leg. Okay, so the patella can come out of the groove to the inside or to the outside. <clears throat> In most small breed dogs, it luxates medially, so it, lux it, it dislocates to the inside. Hello, Jean, welcome back. Um, to the inside of the leg or the inside of the thigh. And um, there is a genetic predisposition, unfortunately, to medial patella luxations. Very common in lots of small dogs. Chihuahuas, Yorkshire Terriers, um, Poodles, Miniature and Toy Poodles, um, Miniature Pinchers, Jack Russell Terriers. Um, and what you typically see um, with a luxating patella, it doesn't always cause pain, but if you think about a Jack Russell, it often, when it runs, it often has a skip. So it runs, the one back leg comes up for about three steps, then it comes down again. And then sometimes maybe the other back leg might come up and the dog runs and then it comes down again. In a lot of those dogs, not all of them, they have a luxating patella. So as they, as they bend and that patella pops out, in order for it to come back into place, they actually have to straighten the leg. And as they straighten the leg, the kneecap pops back in and then the leg is back on the ground again. And vets will talk about a patella skip in the walk. Okay, so the dog does the dog skip? And that means that for one or two steps, that back leg comes up and then the patella goes back into place and then the dog carries on as normal. Okay, and I will post, I've got a little video that just shows you what that movement looks like. So I will post it on the Facebook page after this. <clears throat> um, okay, so why do we make such a fuss about patella luxation? If the kneecap, if the kneecap is out of place, then that joint is malfunctioning. That's number one. Number two, if we look at this um, model, if you think about the muscles that are up top here, 
and the strength in a muscle. One of the very important factors or the roles that the kneecap plays in the knee is to stabilize the knee. So as this muscle contracts, it pulls on the tendon and it stabilizes the knee. That means the cruciate ligament, which sits, hmm, which sits inside, it sits inside there, just trying to get the best there, that's it. That's the cruciate ligament. That is also a very important stabilizing ligament in the knee, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. If the kneecap, if the kneecap is out of place, then this bone can move forward. There's more, there's more movement in the knee, and that means that the cruciate ligament has to work harder. And the harder the cruciate ligament works, the more prone it is to injury. Okay, so. There's two reasons the patella needs to stay in place. Number one, it's for proper functioning and movement of that joint. It's got a glide and it allows the proper recoil and movement of the leg. Number two, it assists to stabilize the knee when it's in place. Therefore, it has a cruciate protection um, uh, function. Okay, so many dogs will go through their life with a patella luxation and we won't even know it. Um, and that's because the degree of luxation is, is, it changes in, or it differs in severity. And we will, as vets, we will grade it from one to four. Um, zero is no patella luxation. One is it slips out, but it quickly comes back in and we hardly ever notice that it slips out. Two, it slips out and it, and it might take some intervention, some human intervention to actually get it back. Most of the time it's in the groove. It's only when we stress, when the dog stresses the leg that it pops out. And so that's a grade two. A grade three, it's out more than it's in. And we physically have to manipulate it back in. And a grade four is it's out and we can't get it back in. Okay. And those grades have got surgical implications. So let's just think about, if you look at this model, many of the dogs that have got bow legs suffer from patella luxation. So <clears throat> here are my legs. Okay. Now, if you can imagine, let's just do it the other way. If you can imagine the patella and the quadriceps actually come down straight. Now I've got a bow leg. It's going to pull that kneecap into, it's going to pull it out of its, its groove. Okay, so there are certain dogs where surgically we actually need to look at straightening this leg at the same time as attending to the dislocated kneecap okay that's quite intense surgery um and it's and and it's in very very severe cases and usually a grade four okay so let's just look at um grade ones and twos are usually uh, are often grade one is non-surgical grade two is controversial depends as a vet on which side of the fence you sit surgical or non-surgical and grade three and four we usually say are surgical so a grade two, the reason, the reason for not doing surgery in a grade two is often that the dogs are not sore. The dogs don't exhibit pain. They skip every now and again, and then the kneecap comes back into place. And hey, you know, we're all none the wiser. Um, and so the argument there is, well, my dog is not uncomfortable. So why would I put him through surgery? And then I have to keep him still for six weeks after that. The opposite camp says every single time that that kneecap slips out of place i am creating wear and tear on this ridge and i am potentially creating too much stress on my cruciate ligament so if i don't repair it if i don't put that if i don't place that kneecap permanently back into place 
Number one, I'm going to get a lot of osteoarthritis with time. Number two, I increase the risk of a cruciate ligament injury. And that research has been done, and I can't remember the figures. But definitely, dogs with an untreated medial patellar luxation have like a 20% greater chance of tearing the cruciate ligament. Okay, now, the purpose of these Facebook Lives is not to frighten you. It's to say, let's start a conversation with our veterinary practitioners. Okay, my dog's got a medial patellar luxation. I'm going to do some research. I listened to Dr. Tanya. And this is what she said, and I've gone and read, and now I really want to know what's the best way forward for my dog. Okay, so I have some dogs which have um, grade three and grade four luxations that have never been treated surgically, but we have very, very diligent um, um, pe um, pet parents, and they come for... Um, for regular sessions at the hydro, and basically that dog, some of those dogs we've managed for five or six years, and um, they don't even have um, pain meds. So it is possible. I just think that the scenarios are different for every person and for every dog. And those are the conversations that we want to have here at Animal Health and Hydro, is what is in the best interests of you and your dog, your family, your financial situation, the time that's available to you, all of those things we want to consider when we start looking at, okay, so my dog has a problem. What's the best way to, what's the best way to deal with or alleviate this problem? Okay, hi Lisa. So, um, what can we do for dogs that have got a grade one and a grade two patella luxation? I go back to leash walking. If you teach your dog to walk in a harness at a, in a controlled manner, it will reduce the skipping because the skipping occurs the moment there's more forces on that joint. In other words, the dog moves into a trot or it moves into a canter. It's more likely that that kneecap is going to actually dislocate. So I'm not saying don't ever let your dog run. What I'm saying is that if we walk the dogs in a controlled manner, as I mentioned already, I don't know, three weeks ago, if we walk the dogs in a controlled manner, we are stimulating the use of every single one of those four legs individually. And therefore, we are maintaining muscle activation and muscle strength within those legs. And that is an important factor in keeping the kneecap in place. Okay, if the conformation is bad, we're going to have another conversation. Okay, but if we have a grade one or grade two, then what it really means is often the quadriceps muscle, the muscle at the front of the thigh, is weak because the dog is not activating and moving properly. So aside from the walking, what else can we do to strengthen that muscle and to keep that patella in the groove? Definitely downhill walking and uphill walking. Sit to stands, but sit to stands where the dog is not moving forward with the front legs but actually pushing up with the back legs. It's a really great back leg exercise, the whole of the back leg for whatever problem you might have. Because in essence, what the dog is then doing is a squat. As it sits, it's squatting. And as it comes up, it's pushing itself back into its normal position. And it's engaging all of the muscles, including the quadriceps. Okay, so that's a, a really good exercise. Controlled stair walking, up and down. Very, very good exercise um, for, for activating and maintaining muscle mass. These exercises ideally should happen with the patella in the groove. Okay, so we use the underwater treadmill, but we are very careful that when we are walking the dogs in the water, that the, that the kneecap is actually staying in place. Otherwise, we're not really achieving what we want to achieve. Okay, um, and all the more reason for you to consult a veterinary rehabilitation practitioner if this is the case and you do want to do exercises um, it's good to at least do an initial consult and one or two exercise sessions so that the person can determine how well that knee is working or whether or not we need to think about surgery okay and i'm just thinking about what other exercises are really good um I think those are those are the easy ones where it's difficult to 
um, to to go wrong. Uh, let's just see, Magda, uh, I agree. Look at the options. Don't just operate. I wish my vet referred me before I operated. Um, continued sessions at Animal Health and Hydro have helped Emily a lot. And at present, there's no need for an operation on her other knee. Thank you, Magda. That's a really, really nice um, paragraph. And and we have walked a long road already with Magda and Emily. And, and it's delightful that we have a, a patient that um, that is doing so well. And um, Emily is a basset hound and she's just gorgeous. And um, I would say that on my, um, I think it's on our on our YouTube page, we, we did an interview with Magda uh, in which she goes into her emotional distress around um, not being, not having the information um, when she made the decision for Emily to have the surgery. So Emily did have a, um, a luxating patella. So really the, the purpose, I'm going to end off now, the purpose is of this Facebook Live is really to give you food for thought, to identify some issues that you might have with your dog and to say, let's get conversations going. It's so vitally important that we don't manage or treat animals and people too um, in a recipe formulation. Every, every, every animal and every person and every family um, has an individual set of circumstances. And we need to be talking about how do we best serve you in those situations. And so with that, I will bid you adieu and I will see you, um, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, one last thing, Lindy, have a chihuahua with a grade three um, left as well as a grade two right, ho hovering on grade three. Holistic approach, like you said, due to his size, hydrotherapy, swimming, acupuncture, exercises, um, keeps him without pain. Uh, what are my thoughts on a brace? Um, Lindy, uh, I think it depends on the brace, and I think it depends on the orthotist that um, creates the brace. It will need to be a custom-made brace, and um, we need to check whether the orthotist, whether the brace will actually hold the kneecap in place. I think it's a good thing to investigate, and um, and you're based in Cape Town, I think. Um, so just confirm that, and then I will answer. I think there are one or two rehab people you could look at who would know an orthotist in Cape Town. I think there was a human guy at the Vincent Pilotti Hospital that was actually making um, stifle braces for dogs. Okay, okay, Yoni. Now I know why tequila skips a little. Okay, brilliant. And, and he is one of those breeds. So being a minpin, he's going to fall right into that um, category. Great, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, cruciate ligaments. So we carry on with the stifle. We'll end off the week on a, on a, um, a, a note where I know that uh, cruciates are a really, really big thing for a lot of people. Thank you. Thanks for your time.